How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? And welcome to the review of WWE Cockblock 2016 End of the Line. Did I say Cockblock? I mean Roblox. I apologize. Hey, Biggie. I don't know. On No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, we are your Canadian based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, as you just heard, pun intended. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter and join in the conversation by tweeting at No Holds Barred WP or, you know, go listen to all previous episodes of the podcast on YouTube, Spreaker, and Pod Bay. Pod Bay? Pod Bay, Pod Bean. I always say Pod Bay. Why do I say you Pod Bay? That wa- you I- love that word. I- God. Why do I say Pod Bay? Because you think of Bay Mella. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Bay Mella. <laughs> Anyways, guys. We just watched WWE Roadblock, Cockblock, whatever you like to call it out there. I call it Cockblock because it wasn't really much of a pay per view. I'm too sad right now to say anything. <laughs> yeah, my boy over here watching his girl lose. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say to that. You were happy about it. Yeah. You just wanted the feud to end. Yeah, literally, that was the only reason why I wanted to. <laughs> I'm just, I'm thankful it's at its end now. That's all. That's all. Um, it was what it was. Yeah. Anyways, so we'll tell you, let's start with the pre show. A good old pre-show brought to you by Toys R, what is it, Toys R Us and Tap Out this week. <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> Great. Anyways, we had Big Cast facing Rusev. Uh, we all know about the feud. We had the awkward, uh, I don't know what the fuck that was a couple weeks ago with Enzo and that was Lana. Cock block. And then we had the promo Enzo cut on Lana this this pay per view, <laughs> basically calling her a slut without it's, calling her. Literally, a slut. it was savage as hell. Savage as all hell. <laughs> yeah, I was I was shocked to see Enzo back. I thought maybe he would come in later and interfere, but yeah. Um, I was expecting this match to actually just last like five minutes, not even. And it actually lasted a good. They started the counter at like twenty or fifteen minutes. It lasted a good fifteen minutes. Something like that. Yeah. And it was, you know, snooze fest galore. Yeah. I we weren't even paying attention. I mean the crowd was excited for Enzo and Cass, their entrance. That's that was about it. Mm-hmm. The way the match ended, oh my god. I even know if you can call that a match. When Rusev and and Cass were fighting in the the crowd and then they come back. And Enzo gets blindsided by Rusev, and then Cass goes to help him out, but doesn't realize that he's at a nine count already, and by the time he gets back in the ring, ten count. Wow. Done. Jeez. So glad I stuck around to watch that pre-show match. So I assume that they're going to continue this feud with en- with Cass. Well, I mean, they're going to have to. Royal Rumble's still, like, freaking a month and a half away. So I assume so Cass get- is going to get a win at some yeah, point. Getting into feud. the Christmas bullshit the next two weeks. Great. Can't wait for that. Um... I'm, God, after this, like, I just don't want to watch Raw anymore. Like, it's gonna get bad when this whole new UK division gets in and they have their own show, and it, that turns out to be really good. I'm just gonna tune out Raw altogether because of this shit. Okay, I, how about this? How about I can say, thank God, it's on the pre-show. <laughs> it wasn't on the main card. Yeah, it, it was typical pre-show. Yeah, literally. Oh, I just at this point I'm like, man, this pay per view is gonna. Y- you want to get excited for a pay per view. You know, you want you want a match to like. I know it's a pre show, but you want something to kick off the pay per view in a sense to like get you into it. And this pre show, it was as bad as Luke Harper versus Kane in Survivor Series. And this ended in a no count, like a count out, <laughs> no contest. <laughs> it was, spoke a lot for this pay per view, and we'll get into that. So we're getting to the opening contest. We had New Day versus Sheamus and Cesaro. This was actually a good match. This is a decent match. Okay, it was for the tag team championships. A lot of people just finally wanted to see. Now that New Day broke the streak, they wanted to see Cesaro and Sheamus be the ones to dethrone the New Day, and they just for once see the New Day get dethroned because you know what like you said in uh, the lowdown show a couple weeks ago they're just getting too stale now and it's you know it, we're sick and tired of it we, we need a change in the new day maybe go back to heel because they're still well, getting over as a heel team well and they showed a lot of heel tactics tonight yeah lots especially with xavier woods jumping up on the apron like purposely Kicking. blowing the trombone 
getting the rest attention. And he did that kick. Yeah. Into the big ending where Cesaro yeah. or Sheamus kicked out of. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of kick out to finishers in this match. And the biggest highlight was the, the strategically placed no tag by Cesaro basically purposely moving his hand out of the way to make it look like he, he tagged, tagged Sheamus when Kofi wasn't paying attention. Kofi gave Cesaro the uh, trouble in paradise. And then Sheamus comes in, who's still the legal man, and jumps all over uh, Kofi. Kofi, which ties his legs together and like gets the leg lock and then pins him for for the one, two, three. No finisher, just jumped on him and pinned him. That simple. It, it was a surprise pin. And your new tag team champions, Cesaro and Sheamus, the team where I've started to get behind, I'm slowly starting to get more behind. I think this is a good way to boost this team. If they're yeah. serious about pushing these two guys and going forward with this, I think it's a good idea to put the titles on them. It's just like what they did with Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. They were serious about those two. They put the titles on them, and look, they actually got over with the people. People love Tyson Kidd and Cesaro teaming together. And, but we always uh, know now Tyson Kidd can't do that. And I know Cesaro isn't the same type of wrestler. But you know what? If they're serious about trying to get people behind us, I think this is a good way to do it and have them be the tag team champions. It's like the whole team hell no again. Like they, they hated each other at first and then tonight you saw when they came out they had like kinda like their a dual entrance where they weren't trying to one up each other. Yeah. It was then, sick. Like when the lights came on for Sheamus and then Cesaro was in in the midway of his tearaway and the camera spinning around them, it, it looked good. And they did the fist bump, that actually looked pretty decent. And then at the end when they won the title, <laughs> oh, Sheamus God. took both of them and yeah, then, Cesaro didn't like uh or Seamus didn't like Cesaro hugging the New Day at the end and being all friendly with them. So he took a section of that, grabbed both titles, and, you know, does and, his whole and title the, celebration on the ropes by himself while Seamus goes into Ceza- the Cesaro, Cesaro section, like the middle of the section. Cesaro goes out, no shit. Yeah, sorry. Cesaro goes out there and, like, just gets the crowd to cheer for him. <laughs> they do the whole, like, Damien Sandow and Miz thing. Yeah, boo. Yeah, boo. God, it's overdone. I don't want to see that. Then the, <laughs> Cesaro finally stole the title uh, on the stage yeah. after. And he jumps on him <laughs> like a celebration jump. Yep. So oh, God. good, good for Cesaro and Sheamus. I yeah. mean, Sheamus, I don't give a fuck about him, but Cesaro well deserved finally getting the title. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's like Bray Wyatt that. all over again. The most they can give him is a tag team title. Yeah. So point. now we know the New Day's getting their official rematch. They, they, you know, yeah. it's the clause. Um, it'll probably be before the Royal Rumble, maybe, or maybe it'll yeah. be at the Royal Rumble. We'll have to see what comes up well, in the next even couple matter. of weeks. They they broke the record, so there's nothing else they even need to do. Yeah. Um. If the New Day, well, you can't have a number one contenders because New Day have to have the rematch first. And then after that, I guess you can decide. But the club. Yeah, I think the club should be the ones next in line. I mean, who else? Unless they bring up the revival. That'd be an interesting few. Or Golden Truth. Mm, <laughs> nope. <laughs> or Shining Stars. Nope. Or Enzo and Cass. Or but Enzo and Cass. Nope. They'll nope. probably be feuding with Lana. Yep. <laughs> uh, so move on. Let's talk about the Cruiserweight Championship. TJ Perkins, Swan, and Kendrick in a triple threat match. Um, wow, was the crowd ever fucking dead for this oh match? My God, you can you can so tell the difference between the two hundred five live and then the yeah in casual central. No, not and even Pittsburgh that. Pittsburgh like, out of all the, places, man. They're supposed to be a good fucking city, man. Not what even happened tonight. Not even that. It's like the style they do because when they when they're on Raw and pay per view for Raw, they have to do a certain style. Yeah, and it just doesn't it doesn't get over. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it kind of I saw what some people were saying on Twitter. Um, it looked like they're kind of holding back a little bit. They that's weren't, what they do on. There Rob. wasn't a full. But this wasn't a full potential no. cruiserweight match like we that, that we're used to seeing. That's what they do on Raw. They hold them back. Like it was watered doing, down. Like yeah. this was garbage. That's what Raw does. Like there was a couple of good spots, but I mean, it, it just it wasn't the one the, the, the cruiserweight match I wanted to see out of this. And and it, and it kind of looked like clustered a little yeah, bit. And, and they wonder why we're calling it cock block right now cuz it was a cock block of a pay-per-view. They cock blocked us from a really good pay-per-view quality match. We got we got a fucking main event triple threat match right there. Or superstars. Or heaven forbid Saturday morning slam if that horrendous show ever came back. <laughs> Or dark match. Or dark. It, this could have been a dark match. No, it couldn't. I mean, but in all that, uh, in the back of my head, I, f- I thought for some reason Kendrick was actually going to pull this off. Like there was going to be a little tension between Son- Swan and TJP, and they would screw each other over, and then Kendrick would be the one to pick up on it. But no, fucking Swan and TJP double super kick Brian Kendrick, and then last second, Swan turns around and gives TJP. The fucking, his finisher, I don't even know what he calls his finisher, and then that's it, quickly, just like that. 
Like, wow. Really anticlimactic. It was ending, like a dude. five to eight minute match, I think. Yeah. Not was, even. Again, like we say, it was really watered down and like... I really can't really talk any much I, I, more about it. Yeah, I feel like they they definitely could have done a lot more, but I feel like they weren't allowed to do more. No, it, yeah, I, I the, know what you mean. The most interesting part yeah. of the match was after the match. Yes, um, huge, huge return. I guess. Well, I can't can't say return because he's been returned for a while, and we're wondering what the fuck happened because he comes back from injury, and we're like, hey, why is he not being used? Or and what do we say? He be he looked better and and suit well in the cruiserweight division. Out comes fucking Neville. Big Thank pop you, for Neville. God, my lord. They've listened. Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon have fucking seen the light for once in their fucking lives. And we have Neville coming out. Joining the cruiserweight division. There's the, the history between Neville and Rishwan being friends through the cruiserweight classic and just a history together. And, and he just turns on Swan just like that. What? Awesome. Yes, yes, I'm, Neville, I love it. Neville's never been healed in WWE. And think. look what he did. He kicked the shit out of all three of them. What no. do we say he needs to do? He needs to go to the cruiser division and what? Be the top of that fucking division. And now he's How do you do heel. that? You fucking beat up the top three guys in that division. He didn't touch Kendrick, though. He did not. T- yes, he didn't touch Kendrick. He kicked the shit out of Perkins and Swan. But I though. guarantee you, there's going to be a spot somewhere on Raw or 205 where Kendrick's going to, you know, try to give him props, and then Neville's going to be like, "No, don't touch me. I'm on my own." He's going to be like that lone wolf. That Neville is a top it. heel in the cruiserweight division. I like. Yes, that. I like. Yes, him a lot. we wonder why we want to stop watching Raw and just watch 205 Live because look at this shit. <laughs> God, they have Austin Aries there, ready to come back whenever his eye injury's done. Yeah, he was on commentary. This, for this division's going to be stacked. They kicked man. off Byron Saxton off commentary. With Tajiri coming next month, yeah, like <laughs> fuck, man, like this are going to be good. It's going to be a good division. Neville, we he he still gets our war award for Barry of the Year. If you listen to our Slammy Awards, yeah, if not, go back, guys, go look at it's on and Spreaker. The video right now. will be up eventually. Yeah, I'm working my it's. It's a lot of editing because it's a two-hour podcast, and it's you have no idea how much it takes to edit a big file and upload a big file like that. <laughs> it's the biggest file I've ever had to upload, and thank God Spreaker is the only thing right now that's letting me upload it. Like, Podbay wouldn't even let me upload it because it was too big. I have to somehow condense it, so I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, I might have to split it into two parts, so we'll see. Um, but that will be up for, like, a yeah. Christmas special. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... And saying so, that, yeah, awesome Neville returning. It looks like he's going to be in a two hundred five division. I mean, he was useless on Raw. They weren't fucking using. They were going to feed him to Braun Strowman anyway. Yeah, so. and if he went to SmackDown, he probably would have been buried like Apollo Cruz. He probably would have been facing Apollo Cruz in the dark matches where Apollo Cruz is. Or hiding. he would have lost to James Ellsworth. Or that, you know, or heaven forbid, Kurt Hawkins, that fucking hot mess. Or sorry, hot piece of gar. Why am I saying the word hot? <sighs> I'm botching. Dumpster fire. I'm botching right now, just like a lot of botches in this pay per view, guys. I didn't have a lot of sleep but today. The best so. part in the match was Neville turning yeah. heel and coming back. So. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, moving on. I can't talk about this anymore. <laughs> Next, we get another uh, great segment you liked. So, speaking of me being tired in a snooze fest, get Braun Strowman. <laughs> okay, I say it all the time. You guys know, and it's getting repetitive and it's getting annoying. But I can't get behind Braun Strowman unless he has something serious in front of him to feud with. This, I thought, was all right because it wasn't a squash like I thought it was going to be. Well, They had the whole stipulation with the 10-minute thing where Zayn had to prove to McFoley he could last more than 10 minutes against Strowman. At least 10 minutes. At least 10 minutes, sorry. But for the first, like, seven minutes, seven and a half minutes of the match, Strowman was just kicking his ass. Yeah. And, well, it's not as bad as it was. And it got to a one point where McFoley came out with the fucking white towel. I'm like, oh no! And like, throw it in. Save I honestly him. thought he was going to, but then I'm, we're we're sitting there going, okay, this is they're they're biding the time. They're trying to yep. make the time run out. And then Zayn finally gets up and grabs it and just hucks it into the crowd. <laughs> and then uh, I was surprised no one threw it back. It would have been hilarious. <laughs> um, threw it into the ring. Yeah. So Strowman's like, your blood, the blood stains on your hands, Foley. And, and he gets, gets into the ring and, and Zayn actually gets starts a comeback. Gets a halluva kickoff, but the time runs out. And I thought they would continue from that point on. No, they fucking ended the match. And Sami Zayn. Why did they end the match? Why didn't they keep going? Because apparently it was a ten minute time limit. That match. was that's the worst fucking idea for a match I've ever heard of. That was. You know they're gonna continue it now. Heaven forbid that they continue that match 
and it lasts, oh my god, two more minutes, Vince. Wow. Oh, you just sacrificed a lot there. Your savior wrestling getting two more minutes? God. No, because they, they wanted to save the, the, the final encounter or mm. something. So these guys are probably going to have a real match next, yep. and then Zayn might actually win. We'll see. Or he'll lose again and be finally traded to SmackDown. And saying that, I actually think that he's going to be traded for Dean Ambrose. I think Dean Ambrose is going to be traded over to Raw, and there's going to be a Shield reunion at some point. I think it's going to happen. They better get more than just Sami Zayn. Yeah, I think Ambrose. there's going to be a big trade, but I think you know it'll include Dean Ambrose. Maybe so the club with maybe the club Sami Zayn. So we're hoping for. Yeah. So we'll see. So, uh, especially I don't want the Zayn and Strowman feud to keep going. It wasn't the end of the line, I guess, for that feud. Huh. Gonna, <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to continue, regardless if we want that or not. Uh, move on to a match where I thought should have been for the United States Championship, and nope, it wasn't because, heaven forbid, we have to keep the he- United, title, United States title on Roman Reigns. Yeah, because that makes fucking sense. Jericho versus Rollins, actually a really good match, too. Um, lots of good spots in this match. This was probably my favorite match of the pay-per-view. Um, Jericho, man, a guy, a guy like Jericho... They can put up a match like this. I mean, you have help from Seth Rollins, but Jericho also needs to play big factor in this match, and he did. But for a guy like that at his age, at this print, this time in his wrestling career, is just unbelievable. Guy is literally the goat. His oh. trunks are right. He is the goat. Oh, what? You sparkle crotch? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you just made the list, man. Good. Go you make the list for that. I want to be on the list. <laughs> I actually do too. Who doesn't want to be on the list? <laughs> they had the backstage thing. Oh yeah, where uh, Kevin Owens actually bought a gift for uh, Jericho to make up for last week because he's trying to blame it on Rollins, and in a way he was right. But he got him a Christmas scarf, this ugly ass red green, and green yeah. scarf. Man, and Jericho just throws it back at him. I mean, yeah, it is ugly, but man, look, fuck, look at the scarf Jericho has been wearing. Look, he wear an anchor scarf for like three <laughs> weeks at a time, man. The tackiest scarf I've ever seen in my entire well, it's life. Not, it's not one hundred percent yak hair like his other scarf, you know. <laughs> But yeah, he just throws it back at Owens. Owens gets upset. Then later on, Owens is outside Jericho's locker room, banging on his door, trying to apologize. And he won't open it. And then uh, Owens is basically like, oh, I guess we're not best friends anymore. You know, I see how it is. And then leaves. And I'm like, oh, okay. So at this point, me and you were like, yeah, okay, Jericho is going getting, is to getting get involved some way here. Um, but yeah, into Jericho and Rawls' match. Unreal. Uh, Kevin Owens plays a factor into it, and then there's the deception. It, I don't understand why the, it looked like something we've already seen. They basically did what we already seen before, like a hundred times in the last four weeks. Like literally, they did not need to have Kevin Owens come out, cause the disqualification or not cause distraction for Jericho, and it ends up Jericho to l- losing the match. That's what he did against Reigns. Didn't that already happen? Yep. Why did we have to see that at a pay per view? For you ruined a good match, WWE. <laughs> that everything was good till that point. They could have kept Kevin Owens in the back here. He didn't need to come out. Uh, good play by Rollins though. When Jericho went for that cold breaker, he like caught him. Yeah, that was sick. Put him up, put him in the pedigree. Yeah. Now, other than that though, match was fantastic. Ending, nah, could have done without. Whatever, they did it for a reason. We all know the Jericho yep. versus Owens feud is happening every time now. It was two good performers for in a non title match, so yep. there's nothing. And it should have been for the US title. And Jericho should have won the US title and be that guy to you know, it would make sense because he calls himself the GOAT and he could be like, Yeah, I'm the only superstar ever to win every singles title in the WWE. And it wouldn't even be a sympathy run because he deserves it. Yeah, he does. A hundred percent. A guy that can get over at this point in his career and actually wrestle unreal matches with Seth Rollins out of all people deserves that. And I don't know why WWE is is hesitant on not. Fuck man, they have such a boner for Roman Reigns. <laughs> to, like, he didn't need to keep the U.S. title today. <laughs> didn't make any sense. Didn't defend it. When was the last time he defended? He disrespected. It? It. He came out holding it backwards on his back. <laughs> God, yeah, he's like Dean Ambrose. Any Shield member holding a, a, a mid card title is bad luck. Remember Rollins had both. Yeah, didn't defend it. Yeah, rest in peace to any mid card title that ends up on one of the Shield members. <laughs> God. Anyways, we'll move on in uh, to a thirty minute Iron Woman match. I'm not calling it Iron Man match because Vince's ego is that big. I couldn't care less for Vince's fucking big ass ego. It should be called the Iron Woman match. Like it should have. Like it wasn't NXT. This is what we were talking about too. Why? 
why isn't just Triple H run the whole goddamn show, man? And we were saying like how much better WWE would be if Triple H ran the entire thing. Look what he's done with NXT. Look what he's done. He's done. The, he's had the Cruiserweight Classic. He's adding this new UK tournament. Look at the superstars he's built up in NXT. Look at the NXT takeovers and how popular they become the independent adjacent guys to the in. actual pay-per-views the next day. You can't say that Triple H would not do good running the WWE without Vince. He'd be perfect. Vince doesn't need to do anything. Yeah, he's doing something he loves and he doesn't want to retire yet, but fuck, man. Call it quits. Let you give the let, reins to him. You can still be there. Just let the Triple H be the next chairman and run everything. And take Kevin Dunn and put him in your fucking shed and keep him away from creative as far as possible. So, because what what is going to happen when if Vince just suddenly dies one day? Then somebody's got to... At least if you groom Triple H to take over that spot, he'll be ready. I hope the first move, if it's going to be Triple H, first thing he does and goes, All right. You know, rest in peace, Vince McMahon. Kevin Dunn, Kevin you're Dunn, fire. you're fire. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, Dunn. <laughs> I heard TNA is looking for some people. Get down there. Anyways, can we talk about the? Actually, I don't even know if I want to talk about that match. It was good. Um, the can the, we just talk about how bad the crowd was? Yeah, they were not into this match at all. Oh, it's like. We thought that they were just trying to pace themselves until the end of the match in case something like unreal would happen. They'd be, you know, they have the energy to cheer for, but they are fucking dead from start to finish. And uh, there was a lot of Matt stuff. Like it was a lot yeah. of submissions in this match. It's basically a wrestling match. Like what the women's revolution is supposed to be about. And literally it was casual, casual central out there. No one gave a fuck. Um, Sasha took some big hits in this match. Oh, I mean, she took a that, lot of big bumps in this match. That one bump off the um, Charlotte tripped pushed, her, tripped her off the apron and fucking with face first off God, the steel I, step. That was ridiculous, man. The shit the, these people or these two girls have put themselves through throughout this entire feud has been know incredible. Neither of them are dead. Like literally, man, they put their body. Say what you want about how many times they've had this match, but my god, yeah. they have not. They have went all out in every match. And you hear this term a lot in the WWE, like putting your bodies out on the line. They've literally put their bodies out on the line here, like physically and mentally. They've lost years of their lives in this feud. Crazy, especially this match was, man. And it's Sasha taking that one spot where Charlotte basically did her move, but to the back of Sasha's leg. Man, just like I think she was legitly limping after the match. Yeah, the, Charlotte was just relentless on her one leg mm -hmm. the whole match. And I knew it was going to go well. I really didn't want it to go to overtime. It was zero zero for the like halfway through the match. But I think once we got to the five minute, like five minutes left in the match, we all knew like, okay, it's either going to be by one at the last second or it's going to be overtime. So it was two one for Sasha. Going in the last three minutes, and Charlotte was just holding on to her in the submission move for yeah, and until the two minutes. seconds left, and then Sasha finally couldn't take it anymore and tapped Absolutely. out with two seconds left, and then tie go to referee makes a decision to go to sudden death, and then in it Charlotte finally applies a figure eight, bridges it, and then that's it. Call Sasha was going for the bank statement, but when she came down on her leg, she played the injury mm -hmm. spot where she couldn't apply it. Charlotte puts her in the figure eight. Sasha's bleeding from her mouth. I don't yeah, know there's was, a lot of blood there. I don't know if it was from that that uh, steel step spot yeah, or if it was from something, something else. Because I didn't see it. I, if you guys know what happened, let us know because I didn't see it she at all. She was bleeding a lot from her mouth, man. And I just, uh, man, I saw it. They're really playing hot potato with this title. Well, at least it's it's it. Like, there's no rematch clause in the in. The contract, they, it's over. They really didn't need to make Charlotte a four-time champion and Sasha a three-time champion in this entire feud. You could have just had Sasha hold uh, or Sh Sasha win the belt once and then Charlotte win it back and then have her just keep defending yeah. it up until now. Like I said, I I wholeheartedly like respect and will always appreciate these women for what they did with this feud, but WWE the fact made, that WWE ruined it with all these title changes. They fucking watered down this feud so bad. If it would have only been like a one or two time change, I would have been okay with it. And it was basically like 
the crowd was dead because they are dead of the feud. Like, they are sick and tired of seeing this match and like, for, like, the 50th time in the last month. I realize all the matches they've had have been different stipulations, but I feel like they rushed that too much. No, like, I feel I, like they wanted to just do a new match, do a new match, do a new match, which is great. But then, like, you still get the same product in the ring that I've seen the last th- those last couple of matches. It's the same crap. It's the same ring chemistry. It's the same moves. Like, it... There's, There's only so I know much the stipulation. People say, like, do. oh, that's their moveset, though. No. I know you, it's the same moveset, and you can face different wrestlers yeah. with the same moveset, but it, the chemistry in the ring is the same. You're, you're going to see the same shit you've seen the last couple of times, and this, this really didn't yeah. show that much. And like, you, like I said, the stipulations can only do so much. Mm-hmm. And I think this was my least favorite of their feud, just saying. I think the, raw, the first Raw match... Of the brand split was, that was my, my when favorite. she won it when Sasha yeah. won it the first time that was my favorite. That should obviously. have been the only time she won it. They could have made Charlotte win it the next pay per view after that, and then have Charlotte just keep it up until now, continue her undefeated record into the next feud, which and she still is right now. She's undefeated in 2016 at singles matches. It's crazy. The streak, streak continues, he's man. Had, man, it's nuts. Holy crap. Ric Flair did not interfere in this match. I was actually shocked. Yeah, we thought he was going to play a, pa- uh, a factor here, like come out and screw Charlotte or so- or uh, Sasha. Yeah, he did not. No, that was shocking but, as well. Um, I mean, this feud's finally coming to an end. Yeah, but um, I mean, I enjoyed the feud up until you know maybe the Hell in a Cell. Yeah, and then it just got way too redundant. Mm-hmm. But I still uh, appreciate what what the girls did in the ring. Yep. My girl is not a champion anymore, but. Now it's going to be interesting to see what happens from here. We were predicting Charlotte goes against Bailey and starts that feud leading up to WrestleMania. Or maybe she starts another feud and then Bailey gets her shot at WrestleMania. Maybe there's like a, a woman's ba- uh, Royal Rumble at Royal Rumble. Um, something like that. And we'll see where Char- or Sasha Banks goes from Probably here. Probably Nia Jax. Probably. I hope not. I maybe hope Dana she doesn't get squashed <laughs> by Nia Jax. I'll be pissed. <laughs> or maybe, you know, they're uh, Emma Lina. Whatever's happening with her and uh, to, oh yeah, the debut that was supposed maybe to happen. Maybe they're going to reunite ago. Team Bad with Tamina. <laughs> we get the bodyguard back. Uh, Sasha should just go heel, please. There you go. You have Tamina as your bodyguard. Why not? Tamina's not going to fucking wrestle part or full time. No, she's going <laughs> to face Nia Jax. She needs to be that manager role with Sasha Banks. I think I think it'd be great. I would one night. I wouldn't mind. Didn't you say Paige was coming back to Raw? I think she's coming back as a backstage role. She can't really wrestle. She's still like re- she still has to rehab that neck. Like she can't physically get in the ring until April or May of next year. But she can come back in a backstage role of some of something. I don't know. Maybe mm. she'll come back as an well, interviewer. She's, she's back to be total diva stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. But uh, yeah, good for these two women. Uh, end of a feud. Let's move on to the main event for the Universal Championship: Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. Boo! Holy crap! The wow, booze the for booze this. at where it's got the heat, man. Oh, I'm sorry, not all booze. Yeah, it's some fans, the the fan, the couple. Oh, of fan they, they showed, the, yeah, they showed the the women in the crowd. Like, oh my god, oh my god, he's so hot. I love his long hair. Uh, can we just add quickly the bad inserted? pictures of oh my god <laughs> people that yeah, we apparently forgot, they're doing that during a women's match like there was literally no reaction to some of the moves and then they, they would show the crowd they and, show somebody and it shows somebody i'm like what that was not live that was not from this match <laughs> that, that was not you can't have there's no reaction to that no one in the crowd's doing it. everyone's like uh Okay. Yeah, they were showing like I shocked reaction. I tweeted the one kid's reaction. I'm like, there's no way he's reacting to this right now. Uh, it was it was priceless. But anyways, um, Kevin Owens obviously gets the pop here. Uh, actually, a pretty decent match, but fuck Roman Reigns, man. <laughs> Literally, I just I can't. I get it's so cringe watching him in the fucking match. I think the best part was when Owens he just did kicks the- out of everything. He gets every spot to himself. He just they they they're shoved. You can see. Them shoving them down our throats and just them getting pushed on us. They're like, God, you guys are doing the right. Does Vince not know that fucking people hate this dude? Yeah, our, our buddy Casey Salvis on Twitter. Yeah. Said, uh, <laughs> like, does Vince not know that, that everyone hates this guy? <laughs> God, it's just so bad. The match was decent, but we all, we all waiting for that one spot where Jericho was finally going to come out. He finally did come out. Oh, what about the spot with Owens where he did the ooh ah? Oh, yeah, the did the ooh ah, yeah, yeah. And then where he laid Roman Reigns out on the table and did a frog splash off the barrier. Didn't break but it didn't break. Time. So he got pissed off and went back up and did it again. And it finally broke. And Roman Reigns, of course, 
beats the count of nine and three quarters. Fuck. Yeah. By the way, the counts all night, 10 central. Yep. See? Fucking Ty Dillinger. I think that should be a Sunday night heat topic. It might be. Ty Dillinger? You know what? <laughs> Putting God. it up on the... Ty might, Dillinger? I, it's going to be you late, but I, I might make a Sunday night heat episode tomorrow on Monday. And or look out for that. At some we'll point. We'll see. At some point. It might be next Sunday. Um, <laughs> but yeah, after that, he beats the count of nine, three quarters. Jericho ends up coming out. Shocker. Shocker. They're both lying there. And uh, he looks like he's going to hit Roman Reigns. And he turns around and gives a code breaker to, to Kevin Owens. And I'm freaking out at first. I'm going, oh, fuck. You got to be kidding me. But then the referee makes a decision thinking that Jericho is acting on the part of Roman Reigns. And gives the DQ win to Kevin Owens. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And then Jericho is looking right at uh, Kevin and starts smiling. He's like, yep, this is all part of the plan, buddy, because I wanted you to keep this and, like, hands him the universal but title. I feel like at the same time, Jericho got a little bit of revenge on Owens, yeah. too, by giving and him I the think cold he's, breaker. He did, he's doing this on purpose because uh, – I think he wants Owens to hold on to the title because I think Jericho he wants, wants to be the shot. one to take it off him. Yeah, yeah. it's going to lead to that. I think this is just a just a feel good moment for us to think that they're best friends again. And it's going to all change tomorrow yeah. night on Raw, and they're leaving. And then here we hear Seth Rollins' music. Seth Rollins' music. I'm like, oh, okay. So they're not ending the show like this. And then Seth Rollins comes out. Rain starts beating up Owens, and Jericho got in the way of of Owens to lead into a spear. Uh, Jericho is running away from Seth Rollins. Uh, Seth Rollins ends up catching Jericho, beats him up a little bit, and then they, uh, Roman and him are looking at the table, and Jericho, they do a shield power bomb to Chris Jericho, and I thought Dean Ambrose would at least come out at this point. I thought there's going to be a shocker here. I think they should have made Dean Ambrose come out here. They needed something to boost the end of this pay per view because the end of this pay per view was just fucking shit. Like everyone was, like, everyone knew it was going to go on, and, and, and well, we got to go into here because this I only put this poll up on the podcast. Um, because of that ending solely. And I put the poll up. I said, what did you guys think of Roblox? Live reaction been... poll here. Yeah, it's still 23 hours left. We have 76 votes total on it. 34% leading the way with God Awful. That meh at 33%. Had the Raw General Manager tuning in there. <laughs> and we also had All Right at 28%. And Unreal at five percent. <laughs> I went corporate and put one percent for Unreal there. Yeah, you're trying, you know, trying to get a little help there. Yeah, I understand. I understand, I understand. <laughs> Even though I did not agree that it but was yeah, Unreal, god awful. So I know what your guys' reaction out there is to that. And you're right. I don't know what the fuck this why, ending was. Why does it? I don't like. I, I think Michael Chow tweeted it. He doesn't like when pay per views end in no a DQ, DQ or a yeah, DQ. It's like, just it takes away from everything. What's it's the like, point? Like I can understand a raw ending in a DQ or something, but like I'm a pay per view is what's supposed to sell and supposed to make you the money. No, this people don't want to see that. Roadblock needs to stop. Roadblock needs to. This would be the end of the line for Roadblock. <laughs> Roadblock <laughs> end of the line, yeah. literally. Yeah. Um, but like everyone saw the the, the trouble power bomb, no one was even excited. They should have. This is where they should have went in. You know what they should have done? They should have paused and wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, and then looked at the stage. And then Dean Ambrose should have came out. And then people were like, "Oh my god, what the fuck? A SmackDown superstar appearing on a Raw pay per view? What the hell is this?" Like right before the Royal Rumble. Hello, we're Raw and SmackDown. People are gonna clash once again. But uh, I mean. SmackDown did have a live event in Barry, Ontario. So today. sacrifice Dean Ambrose. I mean, they, they can't really because AJ they Styles. Don't have styles. Yeah, who would, they, who would be their main event? And Luke Harper maybe if Styles Kane? there, it would have made more sense. But like, the, I mean, this the, where Dean Ambrose should have came out here and they should have done the same thing to Kevin Owens because Rollins and Reigns after chase Kevin Owens up the ramp, but, got him and give him a shield power bomb on the now they're announced table and, and, and then now that was it, it. And now you got Reigns and Rollins being friends again. It's like, what the fuck is this? Why? Why? Like, why? They I hated each other for two years. Where's this going to? They're not going to compete for the fucking tag team titles. Why, why do you need to be together? Two years they fucking hated like, each other. Like, I understand that, like, they do a spot here and there, but, like, now they're they're always tagging to each other. Now. Raw Again, Raw should be called Overkill. They're overkilling with too much shit. I swear to God, there's two different writers for Raw and SmackDown. There has to be. Because this is just know. fucking garbage. But Raw is fucking terrible. I might not even watch it this week. I'm really debating on contemplating on just missing it tomorrow and going to watch my boy Rogue One in theaters. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you, to be honest. <laughs> I wouldn't blame myself either. But yes, 
The only highlight to this was Roman Reigns did not win the Universal Championship. Thank Christ, because I would have. This would have been a fucking rant podcast more than it would already is right now. I would have just ranted. I would just ranted from about Roman Reigns from start to finish if he had a fucking one tonight. But he didn't. Thank God. We didn't get the overkill, cringeworthy piece of garbage winning the title tonight because you know him. Because if he won. He'd have the United States. I couldn't bear looking at Raw and seeing Roman Reigns with both titles on his shoulders. <laughs> I feel like they would have um, stripped Reigns of the U.S. title. I would have just said fuck Raw completely. And a lot of people were tweeting that and texting me that saying, if Roman Reigns wins, I'm not watching Raw anymore. <laughs> but now, like, where does Reigns go from here? Does he actually defend the U.S. title against somebody? <laughs> like, I keep hearing that people are saying that it's going to lead up to a Braun Strowman Roman Reigns feud. At, like, WrestleMania. The only way I want to see that happen is if S- Strowman squashes Roman Reigns. That's the yeah, only way I'd want I, to see that happen. <laughs> That'd be like Vince giving the crowd, like, what they want, and he doesn't like giving people what they want, so that's definitely so not going to happen. R- Reigns He's would, definitely gun- going to have Reigns. R- Reigns is going to be the one to it's beat tough because Vince has a boner for both these guys. We have but, to see which yeah, one has a bigger boner. But I feel like Re- Ra- Reigns is going to be the one to finally beat Braun Strowman. I don't think it's going to be Sami Zayn. I don't think they're no. going to have him win. No. Because Vince has a huge, you know, yeah. hard on for Braun Strowman because he's a homegrown yeah, talent. Savior of wrestling, guys. Yeah, savior of wrestling. Which you is heard here first in the podcast, set. guys. Savior of wrestling, Braun Strowman. But as for this pay-per-view, like, I can't even get excited. Like, no. Nope. That's why we did our Slammies last week. Because yeah. we knew this pay-per-view was not going to bring us anything worthy of being on that show. Nope. I mean, maybe Neville returning, but... That was it. That was actually the highlight. That... I'd say plus Cesaro and Sheamus winning, Jericho and Rollins' match. The Divas will give a little point five. Women, till. we'll put the women. I can't give anything cruiserweights because they didn't give them anything. And Brain's not winning the title. I'm giving Derby cock block end of the line three point five out of ten. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a four. Yeah, that and that, that those are fair ratings, ladies and gentlemen, because it's not it was good. bad. The pavery was bad, plain and simple. SmackDown once again wins the in pay per views for the month. TLC kicked the shit out of this pay per view. I mean, I know it was basically a throwaway pay per view because we're so close to Christmas, but I mean, they should have given us a little bit more than what they like. Uh, ending in a DQ or um, yeah, ending in a DQ. Yeah, like why? No. That ending in a DQ, the cruiserweight match being watered down. Sasha and Charlotte having I don't even know what the fuck's going on there. Look like they're trying to kill Sasha. Jericho and Rollins was the only highlight. And Zane Strowman could have had a longer match. Cesaro and Sheamus winning was good. And pre-show, no one need to fucking watch that. That was brutal. So what are we going to see for the next month here leading up to, to Royal Rumble? Like, I thought this pay-per-view well, was going to be like... It was going to have a lot of implications for what, yeah. you know. Yeah. And in the next two weeks, we're going to get, you know, the Christmas and New Year specials of Raw and SmackDown. And then we'll continue into the... Leading up to the Royal Rumble. And you know what? I'm actually pumped for the Royal Rumble this year. 60,000 seed arena. It's going to be one of the biggest Royal Rumbles of all time. They got the rumors of AJ Styles versus The Undertaker for the WWE Championship. Brock Lesnar and Goldberg are already in the Royal Rumble match itself. I got a lot of ideas of who can win, how they can. It just, what are they going to do these next six weeks? It's one of these, it's another one of these Royal Rumbles where. you don't. There's so many possibilities on who can win. It's not the obvious choice like it was in the past. Like when fucking Batista came back, we're like Roman hey. Reigns. We're like, yeah, Roman Reigns is gonna win this one. Oh, Batista came back. Yep, he's gonna win that one. Triple H. Triple H. Fucking me, number thirty. Yep, he's winning that one. Um, but we know it's gonna be a Raw guy. Yeah, because Elimination Chamber is a SmackDown pay per view. Yeah, so we know it's gonna be Raw and. People say I'm Jericho, but I just don't think Jericho is going to win it because I don't no. think he's going to be as much he even after a Mania. Royal Rumble when he, I don't think he's going to win it and shouldn't win it. If Sami Zayn stays on Raw, I'd say either Sami Zayn or the returning Finn Balor. It's going to be one of them. But I think they're going to make it really, really close. It'll be funny, Roman Reigns. <laughs> I think I actually would contemplate and be like, no, I can't watch WWE right now. I got to take a break until WrestleMania. At I least might take a break from, from Raw. Rumble to WrestleMania. Yeah, from Raw. Sorry. I'll give Raw until the Raw after WrestleMania to start watching it again, if that happens. <laughs> if and only if that happens. But they got six weeks. Let's see what they can do, because tonight they did yeah. not give us... But again, enough. like we said before, guys, brace yourselves for the next two weeks. We're it's going to be s- Christmas, holiday garbage, New Year yep. stuff. Yeah. So don't expect to see any... <laughs> expect to see 
half of what you saw Roblox tonight. That's it. And that's why we are not doing the Lowdown Show this week either. Yeah. Uh, too much Christmas stuff going on this week, guys. The holidays, you know. And it's not going to be anything worthy of no. a podcast. You're, you no. don't want to sit through our hour and a half podcast yeah. of this week's garbage. I'll get it. I'll get it. Sunday night heat out to you guys about Ty Dillinger because that's a huge topic going on right and now. So we're working on the Slammy's video. It's a lot of work, guys. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, that guys. Thanks for listening, and that's going to wrap it up for the cock block. I'm calling it cock block. End of the line on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. They review where your Canadian based WWE podcast reviews and discusses about the WWE and No Holds Barred and anything we say. Pun intended. Be sure to check out the Lowdown Show, Brain Wars, every week, and not this week, as we just said. Where we discuss Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night Smackdown, and 205 Live from that past week, as well as it's a Sunday Night Heat, where myself, Kyle Masters, rants and discusses about training topics in the WWE this week will be Ty Dillinger. Remember, you can follow the podcast on Twitter by joining in the conversation and tweeting at WP, and you can follow and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast on YouTube, Spreaker, and Podbean. <laughs> As always, I am your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And I'm continuing every week to be joined, or I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host, Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful boss. Now only one-time champion. <laughs> He's kind of blissed off about that. But, uh, Corporate Cappy. Yep, uh, since I probably won't hear you guys, have a safe and corporate Merry Christmas, I guess you could say. Merry Blissmas. Yeah, corporate Christmas, you know. Internet guys, see you next time.